Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about uh, mechanical work and we will solve a couple of problems. Um, this is part of uh, the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. By the way, if you found this lecture on YouTube, just searching the U YouTube material, um, you better switch to Unizor.com because the same lecture is referenced from the website but it's presented there as part of the course so you have basically all the components of the course including textual material for each lecture including uh, problems exams etc plus the same website contains prerequisite for this course which is called mass for teens um, and uh, the site is completely free there are no advertisement no financial strings attached so i do recommend you to go to the whole course and take the whole course actually first maybe mathematics as prerequisite and then the physics okay now let's solve a few problems related to the work mechanical work um, now the first problem is as following you have um, an inclined a slope and um, certain force which we don't know yet which one uh, is pushing the object of mass m up the slope slope has angle phi and the height to which we move it is h also is known that the object is moving up the slope with acceleration a so these are four uh, components which basically uh, are describing what exactly we are doing now unfortunately we have the friction and there is a coefficient of friction given now using these components of the movement and the friction we have to calculate amount of work our force is performing which is multiplication of the force in this case force is constant obviously because there is a constant acceleration everything is constant here so the force is constant so we just multiply it by the distance this force is acting now uh, the distance is actually a simple thing because this is the hypotenuse of this triangle right triangle and there is a catheter's h so obviously distance is equal to h divided by sine of phi now the force is more important and it's kind of more difficult to calculate and here is what we can do to get to the force let's think about this object now we know basically everything about this movement so most likely we can apply the second newton's law well since we know that there is an acceleration and the mass i definitely know that m times a is equal to the total force which is acting in this particular direction now what <coughs> what kind of forces are acting on our uh, object well obviously unknown force f which is pushing it up what else well obviously there is a weight now the weight uh, let's have it here weight p is equal to mg where g is um, free fall acceleration and this is not actually the force which we would like to uh, to use in our calculations we would like to represent this force as a combination of two forces one acting parallel to the slope and one acting perpendicularly to the slope why because the one which is parallel is actually contributing or preventing the movement along the slope and the force which is perpendicular to the slope is also very important because this is the source of friction and we have the coefficient of friction here so let me put it this way the final uh, force which is equal to m times a a is, if a is given, M is given, it's equal to the combination of three forces. One force is pushing it upwards, 
which is our force F, which we would like to find out the, per the work it performs. Now, there is a force which prevents this motion. This is the component of the weight. Now, if this is phi, then this is phi, and this is phi. So, this is minus, because it prevents, it, it goes to an opposite direction, mg times sine of phi. And also preventing the motion, which means it's also going against the movement, is the friction force, which is this force times coefficient of the friction. So minus m times g times cosine phi times mu. From this, we can find f. m times a plus m times g times sine phi plus m times g times cosine phi times mu. And knowing f and knowing s, multiply, mu multiplying them, we will get the work. Now, in the textual material for this lecture, I also ask to calculate with real numbers this work if certain numbers are given for acceleration, mass, uh, angle, and uh, uh, coefficient of friction. So try to calculate it yourself when you finish listening to this lecture. Solve this problem again. Derive the formula like this. Use the formula and real values which I present to get the final number. I also get the final number as an answer and I hope I didn't make any arithmetic mistake, you can check your calculations against mine. So that's it for this first problem. Let's go to the next one, which is kind of similar. Okay, the next is slightly different, but still similar. The same inclined with a slope, angle of slope phi. Now, um, I don't have the height and I don't have acceleration. I don't know them. What I do know is that the object which is initially at the very top of this slope at rest is pushed down by force F, known force F. In this case we do know the force. Now, we also know that at the very end it has a linear speed of V. So whenever it reaches the end of the slope under the uh, actions of uh, this force F. Then the final speed is V. And I also have a coefficient of friction mu. And again, my problem is to find out work. Now, F we know, so we don't know the S, we don't know this distance. However, we do know many other things from which we will derive the distance, okay? So, first of all, what we can say is we can write more or less the same type of equation based on the second Newton's law um, and uh, basically see what happens. Again, m times a, which is where, where a is acceleration of the movement along this um, surface, it's equal to the sum of all the forces which are acting. Now, obviously our force F is acting. What else is acting? Well, if the body is, object is here, then this is its weight. Then again, two components, one is parallel, another is perpendicular to the slope. Now, this component of the weight actually helps us because it also directed down and we are moving our uh, object down the slope. So I have to add 
m times g times sine phi, right? Because this is also angle phi, and this is angle phi. Now, the friction, which is a combination of mg cosine phi and mu, is definitely preventing us. It directed this way. So this is an equation which is very similar to the one which was before in the first problem. The only difference is I have plus here instead of minus because we are moving down and not up. So in this case my uh, force of gravity, well more precisely component of the force of gravity, helps us. Another component of the gravity, which is the friction, that actually also, as in the previous problem, goes against our movement. Now, in this case, we know F, which means we can find out A. So A is equal to F divided by M plus G uh, sine phi minus mu cosine phi, something like this, right? Now, we know A, which is good. Now we can find out the time. Why? Because A times T is equal to final speed V. So now we can find the time, which is equal to V divided by A. So we know A, we know V, final speed. So that's how we find the time. And now, S is equal to A T square over 2. This is the standard formula of kinematics of the movement with a constant acceleration at the time. We know A, we know T, so basically we know everything. And uh, that gives you the S, and knowing F you have the work. And again, in this particular problem, I have given in the textual material for the lecture the real values for given variables, try to calculate um, uh, everything else here and check against the number which I provide on the website on the unisol.com for this lecture. That's my problem number two. And let's go to the third one. Okay, now let's say we are on a known planet. So we don't know anything about this planet. We do have, however, an object of mass m, which is on certain height above the ground. And then we just let it go and it goes down. And at the very end, it hits the ground with a speed v. Now, which force is acting on it? Only one force, the gravity, right? Now, my question is, what the work which gravity force performs to basically get this result? Well, we don't know the height, we don't know the time, we don't know the full free, free fall acceleration, we don't know anything except mass and the, and the final speed. Well, let's try to, nevertheless, let's try to calculate the work. <coughs> Okay, now let's assume uh, that the time is t of the falling, the free fall acceleration is a, and the uh, distance or the height it goes, the distance is s. Well, obviously, I know from the kinematics this. Also, from kinematics, I know this. Now, we have three different unknown variables without which we can't really do anything. Well, we do have two equations. We need something else, right? Well, we do know that the force of gravity, F, is equal to m times a, right? Okay. So, <coughs> what can we 
what can we find from this? Well, the work is equal to F times S. Well, let's try to manipulate with these numbers, with these equations, to get to this equation. Obviously, since we have only two equations with three unknowns, well, we'll have to probably use one of the unknowns uh, as a base and calculate others. Like, for instance, we will take A as an unknown. Well, then T is equal to V divided by T, uh, by A, sorry. Now, if I will substitute it to this, I will have S is equal to A T squared, which is V squared divided by S squared, and divided by 2, which is equal to V squared divided by 2A. Now, knowing F and knowing S, basically we expressed everything with unknown acceleration of the free fall A. However, what's interesting is that the W is equal to F times S, which is MA, times V squared divided by 2A, and A cancels. And the result is MV squared divided by 2. So this is basically the final result, and as we see, we have expressed the work performed by the force of gravity, expressed only in terms of the mass and the final speed. And if you remember, when we were talking about the work, mechanical work, I introduced the concept, I was talking about that the work is actually as a measure, as a measure of the result, not how we achieve this particular result. So that's very, very important. No matter how we go to a certain goal, it's the goal which measures amount of work we have to really exhort by going there. Of course, I'm not talking about some um, silly loops, like for instance, we have to go from here to there, we go half a distance, then return back, then half again, then back, etc. No, I'm talking about normal way of pursuing your goal. Now, in this particular case, it's straightforward, we don't waste any energy, we don't waste any time or anything like this. It goes straightforward. However, what is interesting is that no matter what happens, how, what, what's the height, what, whatever, our goal is the, the final speed of the, of, of the object of mass M. And that's the goal which defines completely amount of work which is necessary to achieve that goal. Well, that's it. I do recommend you to go to unisor.com and look through the textual procedures, look through the calculations, uh, do it yourself. I think it's a very useful exercise. Check if my answers are correct. And basically, that's it for today. Thank you very much.